frozen. Okay. Uh, he's not frozen with me. He's definitely there. Uh, maybe refresh your screen, Andreas. So we've got some. So let me just click the record button. We've got Alex Webb talking to some of our students as a guest speaker. So welcome, Alex, and a big thank you for doing this for us. No worries. So we've got a mixture of students online. We've got level one, level two, and level three catering students. Oh, cool. uh, so if we could start off with maybe yourself talking about your career and a bit about Master Chef. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, That's fantastic. I can start from the, the beginning. So. Um... Well, I start, started off as a young chef uh, in my local restaurant. Um, it's called Square One. Um, so I was the pot wash. Um, so I think for any young chef or aspiring chef to start off um, as a pot wash, not only it's not the greatest work, greatest start, but not only that, it kind of really, you see the kind of the bottom of the kitchen. You see how it all kind of, where it all begins. Um, so from there, I started doing little desserts, helping the head chef with the desserts there. Um, so after a little while there, obviously I was still at school. I was about 15 when I was there. Uh, then I, m I moved to, I finished school and moved to Australia. Um, so I'm half Australian. So I moved there for a year in a restaurant. Um, so it was really good in an other rest on the other side of the world to kind of see completely how a kitchen works. And it's very similar. Um, so I did a year there. Um, that was called Windy Point Restaurant in Adelaide. Um, so it was on top of the mountains, which was really cool. Um, so I was there for a year. Um, and then when I came back from there, I came back to London and I went to Westminster Kingsway College. Um, so I was going to go do full time. Um, and then actually the Savoy um, or the, the, the university or the college, they told me that the Savoy were looking for apprentices. Um, so then I came an apprentice chef at the Savoy. Um, so at the Savoy, it's an absolutely massive organisation of kitchens. Um, so it would be one day a week at Westminster. Um, and then I would be um, doing all the different kitchens at the Savoy. So I started off in the staff kitchen. Um, so we're serving up to kind of 1500 people a day of food. I started off and it wasn't didn't really enjoy it to start off with um there was a few teary moments that i was like i don't know why i'm doing this um but you kind of have to think of the long game and you think right i'm gonna one day be gonna get there but you have to kind of do the jobs that sometimes you don't want to do um so staff kitchen uh, and then i moved into the main kitchen um so casper's was the main kitchen there um which was a fish restaurant and oysters um so that was really amazing kind of see you finally see the guests um so I worked there for two years uh, and then obviously I was at, uh, still at Westminster. Um, at Westminster, when I finished there, I got Apprentice of the Year, which was a really nice little achievement. Um, and after, after there, the, I, the Savoy took me on full time. So I was a, a commie chef. Um, so it was a really nice good achievement. And I got on really well with the executive chef. Um, there, so he actually he used to work at Helen de Rose. Um, we knew the chef at Helen de Rose at the Connaught, so they've got two Michelin stars. And I always wanted to do Michelin star because I've always wanted to get my own star. So I thought, well, one day if I can if I can work there, that can really help me. So went to Helen de Rose for a week, uh, and then ended up, I ended up being there for two years. Um, I got promoted to a demi chef the party, which is the next level up. Um, after that, I was so after two years. I kind of after two years at a restaurant for me and some advice. After two years in a restaurant, you kind of think that you know all the staff, you know the team, you know where all the ingredients are. It's quite nice to go to a different restaurant, which is kind of a kind of good advice. I would say two years at a restaurant is almost enough. But obviously, if you love it, that's fine. Um, so after that, I went to Heston Blumenthal. Um, so that was at his, he has the Fat Duck, and I went to his other restaurant, which was Two Mitchell and Star um, Dinner in, in Mandarin Oriental. So I was there not for long um, because I didn't enjoy it. There was 50, there was, uh, 50 chefs, um, which is a hell of a lot of chefs. Um, and I was I was in the bottom kind of prepping. So they have a top kitchen in front of all the guests, um, and I was in the bottom kitchen. And it was just for me, just too many chefs, and I didn't really enjoy it. Um, so I actually um, knew uh, Steve Steve Groves. So he won Master Chef in 2009. Actually, he was one of the first winners. So I knew him. Actually, met him at a Taste of London. Um, so he offered me a job at Rural Parliament Square. Uh, I was there for two years and that was really well I, where I learned a lot. Um, so I think my style was kind of like a French from from uh, from Helen uh, and from Rue Parliament Square. It was kind of when, when you go through all different kitchens, you kind of learn 
what your style of cooking is. Um, so I kind of learned from Helen de Rose and Rue at Parliament Square. Um, that, that was kind of where I took all my inspiration from. Um, so I got promoted there to Chef de Party. Um, so there for two years. So after two years, I'm going to go to my next my next step. Um, so I went to The Frog by Adam Handlin uh, in Hoxton. Um, so Adam Handlin was also a master chef in not sure the year but he, he, he was on the he was on the final three um and so i got i was a sous chef there um with adam handling i was there for about three months um and also for me didn't quite work out some places do some places don't uh, didn't quite work out um so then i thought i'd come back to um come back to dunmo that's where the restaurant is in essex um and the owner of the restaurant where i was a pot wash offered me a head chef role um, so the restaurant was called Square One, it's back to Square One, back to the beginning, um, and it's kind of really fitting, and that's where I am now. So then I, in the November, I applied for MasterChef, um, and here we are. So that's that's me. Can you tell us a bit more about MasterChef then? So that's a great career and a, a great lot of name drops there. Restaurants are brilliant, and I'm lucky we've been to a couple of them as well, because we've taken students up to the Zavoy. Yeah. Um, and there was some work experience uh, planned for there. And I've been to the Frog uh, and met Adam. And we've uh, we've worked with a couple of students with Adam on some competitions. Yeah, no, he's a really cool, he's a really cool guy. Um, yeah. he's a really good restaurants. Yeah, so about uh, Master Chef. Um, so applied in the November um, of twenty. 19 i think yeah 2019 november um and then i got the call in or called in last january um about the show obviously we didn't know what the year was going to happen and we didn't expect it to be like that um so i got the, had a few phone calls um and then there were interviews so it was down from like a thousand a thousand people uh, they nominate you for a phone call and then you they keep cutting you down so i had about four phone interviews um and that got me down to a interview in the studios in london and um, that was actually before lock, before lockdown. Um, so we basically, it was more just to kind of see how you were with filming. Um, so it was in a small little room. There was a camera guy. So there was someone giving you advice on uh, questions and asking you about why you want to go on the show. Um, and then basically it all slowed down because of normally they start filming quite soon after that. And mm -hmm. stopped. Um, so I started, I think it, normally they start in june the filming like the, the first heat uh, but we went in, in july just to have to make sure so the only way the show went on, on this year was because uh the government actually agreed that master chef could film but as long as it was in the studio itself and there was nothing going out um we got tested every day so the bake-off they actually did a bubble and um, so they were there all together where master chef it was almost around the same time uh, master chef we uh, were tested every day and when the guys come to put microphones on you or the film crew guys they would always wear masks um and we'd all be like distant in in the back room uh, behind the scenes but yeah no it was an amazing experience um and you learn a lot you learn a lot with all the guys all the different contestants um and i think me i think me and bart got on the best really um mm. we kind of we, we talk all the time we've got a whatsapp group as well there's four of us in it there's me bart philly and santosh uh, always having trying to keep up the date um so yeah that's that was pretty much fantastic journey so far that is amazing oh uh, we've got some questions from some students they've been blogging about you for the last couple of weeks yep, okay. um, on teams so i've got a question here from oh uh, louise i think louise is online let's just see louise are you there yeah fantastic do you want to ask alex your question hello louise Hi, I was going to ask, um, what was your favourite dish um, on MasterChef? That, that I cooked? Yeah. Uh, I would say the one about my granddad, um, obviously it meant a lot. So the one with the duck, the blackberry jus, uh, blackberry gel, um, and then the hispy cabbage with the kind of the braised duck. Um, and then I had it on the record player going around with the spiral. That was my, uh, I think that's my favourite. Just because obviously the meaning and also that it kind of got me into the final three. Um, so that was kind of, I think that was my best dish. Brilliant. What, what was your favourite dish? Um, I know. think, yeah, I think it might have been the same for you as well. Mainly because obviously the meaning behind it, yeah. Yeah, nice. My favourite dish was the trout. Um, yeah. you could. 
the final. That was brilliant. That was chalk string trout as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that was that. Um, so, and I think it's quite cool how the the pure the sort of the caviar cream sauce goes in, and it's kind of mm. almost kind of turns a little bit different colour with the green powder. Yeah, that, I, I think I, I, I think I remember seeing Marcus really impressed with the, the watercress powder. Yeah, that, that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. We've got another question then uh, from our. Oh, Ben Seymour. Ben, let's just see if he's on. He should be on here. Ben, you there? Yeah. I'm here. Fantastic. Do you want to say hello to Alex and ask your question? Hi, Ben. Hi, Alex. You all right? Um, my question was, what is your um, like next steps, sort of, now that you've won the MasterChef? Uh, the next steps. Uh, obviously, it's all been a bit different up in the air with being in lockdown. Um, so, so to at the moment, I'm carry. I can carry on with private dinners. Um, so I'm doing private dinners at the moment which is a lot of being booked up. Um, so I've got that. I've got a few other deals with some, I uh, can't really say much about that, but the deals <laughs> happening at the moment, um, which hopefully should be out soon. Um, so they're kind of really kind of cool things that's happening. Um, and then just really to see what happens and see what step by step. Um, I'm trying to get a book deal done. So I'm in the process of getting a book uh, done, which would be really cool, which take, actually takes longer than I thought. It takes almost a year to get a book out. Um, so I'm trying to get a book out. Uh, I've got I've got an agent now. I've got a manager. Um, so people helping me, um, which is really really useful. Um, and just kind of take step by step really. Um, at the restaurant as well. I'm still employed by the restaurant. Um, and we're basically going to see if I can be there a bit less and do other commitments as well. So it's going to be quite busy. <laughs> Brilliant. Fantastic. That's really good to hear. Uh, we've got another question from a level three student, Jay. Uh, yeah. Jay, you there? Uh, yes, I am here. Hello. Hi, hi Jay. Hi. Say hello to Alex and ask your question. All right. Uh, hi, Alex. So my question to you is, in your opinion, how important is competitions to, to chefs? Uh, I think, yeah, really important. Good question. Uh, I think really important. Uh, it kind of puts you, it makes you think think harder and think outside the box more and um, so my first competition was actually at the Savoy um, it was a mystery box competition and it was like kind of my first one and it kind of gives you a bit of adrenaline um, and you kind of I actually I won there was only like four of us but I won the mystery box um, so it was my first competition um, but yeah no I think really important it makes you think harder uh, work harder uh, and you when you've got other people that are really good like Bart, Philly and Santos you want to try and do better than them to kind of so you use everything you've got, all your kind of resources. Um, so yeah, no, very important for competition. But obviously, at the same time, we're all friends. Uh, we all kind of st we're still friends, um, and there's, everyone's there. Everyone's human, so you don't want to be too too mean or whatever, you know. Brilliant, that's amazing. We're very uh, competition driven at college. Last year, we entered many competitions around the country and in Jersey uh, with a lot of success, which is really good. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the colleges, uh, the students like to see other chefs if they if they're into competitions as well. So that's a good question, Jay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've got a question here from Harry. Harry Vivash, are you online? Hello. Hello there. Just say hello to Alex and ask your question. Yeah. Hi, Alex. Um, so what what advice would you give to young chefs for entering their first competition or their first job? I uh, well. Good question. Uh, so entering a competition, I probably would say that you really need to make sure that you've got all the knowledge behind you before entering a competition, um, like MasterChef, for example. Um, I probably could have entered it a bit earlier, but I didn't have the experience that I, I would have done I've had when I entered this time, uh, um, this competition. So I think by by having the knowledge and working, working through different kitchens, um, gives you an outlook outlook and aspect on all the different things um, so I mean also even little things like when I first started out I was a waiter at a restaurant um, and that gives me the aspect of kind of working out front um, instead of being a chef you kind of see how the customers get the food so every kind of working every Oh, 
Hi, Alex. I'm not too sure. Have you got your microphone on mute? It just went quiet then. Ah, that's better. Yeah. You're there. Sorry. That's no, fine. Sorry about that. It just went, it went quiet then for a second. Right. Uh, as I mentioned about the lot going into a job, um, when you first when you go to a first job, I would always recommend that you kind of, you know, um, you know that you're going to get along with the staff um, and you have a bit of kind of almost fun as well. Um, you're there a lot, you're there a long time, so you don't want to kind of, you don't want to be, you don't want to be kind of not in the team or you want to make sure they've got a nice team spirit, um, obviously, as well as the, the food, the food there that they're doing that kind of inspires you as well. I, I liked it when you said about uh, when you're working front of house as well as back of house. So you're working in the restaurant and that's really important because a lot of our students do front and back of house. And yeah. oh, I, I, may, I may speak for them on their behalf, but a lot of them prefer to stay in the kitchen. But I always say to them, they need to need to work out the front to understand what's happening. Yeah, definitely. I mean, at the moment, obviously, being head chef at the restaurant, you need to know how the service works, how, how it was run. So if something happens, you can kind of, you know, you know how all the aspects work. So you kind of yeah. go, if something goes wrong in, in this position, you go, right, I know how to fix that. So it's very useful. Um, I like going out to the, to the, to the guests. I don't know if you went, all went to the frog, um, but when they're, all the chefs come out to the tables, they give yeah. food out. Um, and for me, that's really good. You spend all your day, you work your ass off all day. You yeah. want to you want to go to the you want to go to the guests and say this is what I've made for you. So it's kind of it's quite nice to be a nice kind of proud thing. Um, so definitely, I like to bring the, at my restaurant. I like to bring the food out and talk to the customers and so yeah. So it's nice to have that aspect. We replicated that in a competition last year in Jersey. We went over there for a week and competed against other colleges. And our t our student team took the food out to the customers. Yeah, nice. the chefs did. And they explained each dish and it went down really well with the judges and with the customers. And we took that from the frog. Yeah, no, that's five times as well. That's really good idea. Brilliant. Uh, we've got a couple more questions left then. So yeah. we've got one from uh, Ewan. Ewan, you online? Yes. Fantastic. Cool. Say hello to Alex and ask your question. Hi, Hi you right. Um, so, so far in your career, what would you say has been the hardest challenge for you as a chef? Oh, I a tough question, that. Um, mm. Hardest challenge. Um, I think um, we've been, I think Heston was a good example. When I worked there, I kind of, I worked there because I thought it was such a great name um, and it was like amazing working for Heston. But in reality is that if you don't, if you're only doing it for, for that aspect of having a net working for a name, it's naturally not as good. Um, and in reality, it wasn't. I didn't. I didn't enjoy it. Where I went to other places like the Rural Parliament Square, that the team was amazing. I kind of said before. Um, mm. So I think as a as a as one of my challenges was that I kind of had to had to realise that it wasn't right to be there. I had to move on, even though that it might it could have it could have looked bad on my kind of CV, for example, that I've been in too many restaurants too too short a time. Um, so it was kind of a challenge that I had to kind of realise that. So I've, I've made a bit of a mistake here, but to kind of rectify it and go to a kind of a better restaurant um that was that was probably a big challenge uh, at the time yeah. okay brilliant we've got two more questions that's okay alex we've yeah, got no one from uh ashley are you online yeah i'm online i'd like to say hello to alex and ask your question yeah. um my question would be what was the hardest challenge for you as a chef in the master chef competition Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to say the uh, round with Akhtar, um, that was the biggest challenge for me. Um, so I had, it was the, I don't know if you, you've watched it, with the, um, he did kind of the potatoes um, 50,000 ways. Um, so I did it with uh, onions instead. Um, yeah. And didn't go quite to plan, didn't look too good on the plate. Uh, it wasn't my strongest dish. Um, and I thought that was a, that was a real challenge because I'm not, I'm not really, I'm fr very French classical trained, um, so to cook, cook an Indian food in a competition and you want to try and win it, it was quite, it was a real big challenge. Um, so that was difficult. Um, uh, and then the, I think we, ha we had to cook off again. Uh, that's, that was the first cook off to try and keep myself in the competition. Um, and I did the cod and the peach melba. Uh, that was t definitely the toughest. I had to, if, if you, make us do a step wrong you're out of the competition um so that was the that was my biggest challenge i think i think i remember from the show uh was marcus uh absolutely impressed with the peach melba he said you reinvented it 
Yeah, he loved Peter Melba. Um, he actually, yeah. he trained at the Savoy as well, uh, Michael. Yeah. Um, so he had, obviously, the Peter Melba was created at the Savoy um, by Dame Melly Melba. Um, so they've had all the guys know you should know who, 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 does anyone know who created the Peter Melba? I think they're all learning at the moment. Does anyone know? But they're still learning that part at the moment. That's a, a, a Scotty, eh? Um, so he created the Peach Melba at, at the Savoy, and that's where the Peach Melba came from. So I kind of wanted to put a story, a story into the uh, story into the dish. I think I think that as well for, with anybody um, making it making a dish. If you put a story behind a dish or use it in a using it in a way that you inspires you, it always makes the dish better. Yeah, a brilliant, brilliant answer. Thank you for that. We've got a couple more questions then. So we got. Who else has left on the list? Who sent some in? Uh, Kelsey, are you online, Kelsey? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, do you want to say hello to Alex and ask you a question? Hi, um, my question is, what inspired you to be a chef? Oh, um, good question. Tough on that. Um, I would say, um, I think a lot, in, um, a lot in my family that everyone was always cooking um so my dad was a chef not for a long not for a long time but he was a chef at, at a college he didn't do much didn't do uh, all the way but he did that for a little bit um my mum would do cooking um i think i think just being around a lot of people that would be cooking um and i was always learning around my family um and i just kind of I've, as being a chef i absolutely enjoy it every aspect of it um from cooking to ordering the food, to seeing the customers, to making them have a smile on their face. Um, so I think I think it's doing a job that I really love to do. Um, it doesn't really feel like a job. It just feels like I just love doing it. So I think that's kind of the best, the best answer, I'd like say, for that. Brilliant. I think I've got a hand up as well. Maria, our Level 3 student. Have you got a question to ask, Alex? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, hi, Alex. Are oh, you all right? Hi, uh, my question is, um, ha uh, have you got any new fresh ideas during this situation of lockdown? How do you put yourself uh, out there and get noticed or stand out? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so I'm, it's a, it is a struggle. Uh, I'm trying to uh, trying to get myself out there best I can. Um, so I think it's just it's just kind of doing little things. I'm doing BBC Essex Radio. I'm uh, trying to put my name out there every Thursday. Um, so that's, I'm doing a recipe of the week. Uh, my local local paper. I've got recipe of the week. Um, I'm doing. I've done a food box. I don't know if I did a food box. Uh, they got shipped around the UK this uh, last week. Um, so I think I think it's just to try to find new ideas to put my name out there to, if it's doing boxes um, or doing private dinners um, just to kind of keep my name out there keep me ticking over until the restaurants are all back and we're all back to normal hopefully soon um, and just kind of just kind of waiting and just keeping my name out there really is the name is the name uh, aim of the game at the moment really yeah, brilliant. What, what I'm struggling with uh, uh, at this uh, um, present time it's because I used to do uh, events, uh, catering and private functions, and uh, um, now I have a, a problem uh, to reinvent myself and try to put myself uh, uh, out there and get uh, a new customer in or get to do what I used to do before. You know, yeah, I, th I mean, yeah, it's obviously at the moment it's difficult, uh, it's difficult for everybody and everyone has a diff different outlook on it. Um, I think it's just obviously to keep, to keep it nice and positive, um, and I think, um, to kind of keep positive and make sure you know that things are going to turn around soon well, hopefully um and yeah I, th I think by doing dinners and kind of doing these food boxes um for myself but other people as well doing dinners or even just cooking at home with your family um kind of keeps you keeps you cooking keeps you fresh on your mind um i think that's the, kind of the best way to keep to keep yourself kind of out there and ready to go when everything opens up cool thank you. fantastic well thank you very much alex for that that was insightful for myself and hopefully for our students as well I and mean, it was great uh thank you for giving your time up as well for today Can I ask a question oh go on giles i didn't see your hand there go for it okay uh who is your biggest influence Ooh. as a chef or yeah as a chef um to be, to be honest with you i think jamie oliver um he was a really big inspir inspiration for me at the start of my career um he he used to there's a restaurant in dunmo called the star um which is a was a was quite a good restaurant um and he started off there as a pot wash which is obviously where i used to where I live um so he's been a massive influence uh, kind of being an essex boy as well like me um i think he's kind of 
and then all how far he's got from he didn't start off his mum and dad had a restaurant and he started off um so and now he's like an absolute megastar so he he is he's one of my inspirational um and i, th I think he's all as well Mich michelle rue was a lot i obviously i worked for him so that was a real good experience um but kind of the french uh, french aspect of his cooking um but yeah jamie oliver definitely is the biggest one okay thank you Brilliant, that's a good, good question. Uh, Jamie Oliver also went to uh, Westminster Kingsway, same as you, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, hopefully, we might be able to see you on that. Have you ever thought about the Rue Scholarship? I haven't actually. I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, uh, to do that. Uh, to do. I'm not sure if you, if you work for Rue. I don't know. But yeah, that, 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 okay. that I would like to do. Um, or Great British Menu, that'd be really cool. Hopefully as well, I'm going to be doing. Um, we've got a dinner with uh, me and Marcus. We're doing a dinner um, in the summer at his restaurant, so that would be something to look out for as well. Fantastic. Well, I think that's the end of all the questions. No one's popped yeah. up now, so thank you very much for that, Alex. That was insightful and amazing. No oh, I, I think the students will be talking about this uh, in tutorial this week and asking me loads of questions as well. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and good luck for the rest of your uh, what you're going to be doing. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, if you could stay online, Alex, quickly oh, yeah. for me. Uh, students, thank you very much for attending. Uh, you may all go now. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.